And let's bounce back over to the PowerPoint and look at the next exercise, which is uh, logically if we can make one sphere, let's see if we can't create multiple spheres. Right? So at the same time, we'll create uh, more than one. Right? So the concepts that we're going to have to go over are iteration and lists. All right, so this is what we're going to be able to achieve. We're going to create an array of sphere objects uh, using the GH Python object um, in Grasshopper. Right? And um, as we start to create multiple objects and we're using scripts inside of a parametric environment, we have to begin to talk about how exactly we're asking the computer to process the tasks that we're giving it. Right? How does it process the solution? Right? So um, as we've done it thus far, when we created one sphere, because we're doing it in Grasshopper, we're doing it uh, all at once, right? It's live. It happens one time, but it happens any time that you give an update to any of the inputs, all right? Um, the next thing that we're going to look at is what happens if, okay, I want more than one, right? Well, do I have to create them at the same time or can I create them incrementally, which is what we're going to do, right? First I create sphere A, then I'm going to create sphere B, etc. right? And as we get further into the webinar, we're also going to look at can you define a particular solution through recursion, right? Can I define it recursively? And yes, you can. And we're going to do an exercise on that. Um, in a little bit. And there are some other options as to how you can process a solution. Do you want to put the, um, the solution, rel do you want to solve it relative to time? And there's other ways as well. Right? So exactly how we're defining that process determines how and to what degree we have control over the solution that comes at the end. Right? Grasshopper, because it's a parametric environment, its logic is linear. Right? And it tries to process everything all at once. Right? Because we're using scripts inside of Grasshopper, we can change exactly how Grasshopper uh, processes that solution. Right? So the first thing that we're going to look at in terms of controlling how, some, how a, a process or a set of processes happens is going to be through iteration. And iteration just means that we're going to repeat a process until a desired goal is reached. This is also called looping, right? Uh, this is, which is a kind of shorthand term for uh, the exact same thing, where we will repeat a process incrementally until we get to our desired goal. All right, so if we're going to uh, loop, right, we're going to say, I want to create 10 spheres, right? Once we start working with more than one object or having to store more than one object, Instead of working with just simple variables, we have to work with lists. And lists are really just a collection of things, right? Each thing is stored in a particular location on the list, and that's denoted by its index, right? There are some, once we get to the level of a list, right, you can think of this as a grocery list. Um, but once we get to working with lists, as opposed to just assigning and then querying or asking for the variable, uh, what's stored there, when we work with lists, we have uh, some additional methods that we can use, right? You can append something to a list that's added to the end of the list. So uh, I remembered that I needed to get milk, so I added it to my grocery list. So I'll say list.append, and I'll add milk. Additionally, you can do some other things. You can sort the elements on your list. You can reverse your list. So it's in the opposite order, et cetera. Um, and if we were to break down a list, right, um, we're going to have an item or a thing, some, some bit of data, right, either a number or in this case a point, right? That point has a, is on a list, a list of, this should say points, and then um, corresponding to each element on the list is an index value, right? So if I want to get to the third point, I'm going to use index value 2, right? That will allow me to access that particular point, right? So the index values always start with 0 and increment from there. And this defines the order of the objects on the list so that I can either move through the list going from point to point to point, 
or I can say I just want 0.5, which is index 4. All right, so let's go uh, back into Grasshopper and let's create multiple spheres. All right. So the next step is that we're going to modify what we started with here, um, and we're going to create a, a looping structure to create multiple actions. Instead of just one, we want to create multiples. Okay, so let's go into uh, our script. So let's double click or right click and edit. All right, and up at the top, after we create our import Rhino script syntax line, um, we're going to um, do a couple of things. We're going to set up our pseudocode, right? Because all of this stuff inside of this block is going to be inside of our loop, right? What exactly that means, we'll get to in a second. Um, so we need to set up the structure and any correspond uh, for the loop and any corresponding uh, elements of, or bits of information, any other variables, right? So uh, the first thing we want to do is um, we need to create a list to store all of our spheres, right? So um, in the pseudocode, let's create a comment and let's say create a list to store spheres. Okay. What would you like to call this list? Let's hear some suggestions in the question window. We could see, we call it grocery list, or I like this one, my awesome list. It's a great suggestion. All right, and what we need to do here is we need to, um, instead of just setting this equal to some value, we need Python to understand that this is a list. So what we're gonna do, is we're going to say that it's equal to open and close brackets, right? That's the indication to Python that we're going to store multiple things inside my awesome list. All right, so there's our list of spheres. You could also call this my spheres or sphere list, something like that. All right, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, start our looping structure. And I'll put this into quotations so we know that that's the kind of uh, conventional name for it, but it's not, it, it's a kind of uh, simple name as opposed to the technical name, which would be to iterate through multiple actions, uh, the creation of spheres. Right, and the way we're going to do this is um, we're going to use a for loop, right? So for the the structure here, the syntax is going to be for i, which is a variable, right? It's the the, the variable you use to start your first uh, loop, right? You're, it's a counter, right? So i in range between zero and ten. So I'm opening parentheses, say, in the range 0 to 10, close parentheses, and then I have to hit colon, right? That's a colon. When I hit enter, if I've typed that successfully, it's going to give me, uh, you can see there's lightly four uh, dashes, right, that indicate that I'm at an indention, right? So here we are at indents. Uh, sensitive uh, syntax for Python. So anything that is indented happens in, will be inside this loop, right? So that's also referred to as scope, right? So if I'm indented and then I'm back out, then I'm not going to be inside the loop. I want to, I want to create 10 spheres so I'm going to say for i in range 0 to 10. And then the creation of the spheres is going to happen with one tab over or indented four spaces. Okay? All right. So um, here we're going to define our center point, our radius, and our sphere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this 
uh, bit of code here that I've already created. If I select it and then hit tab, it will indent it to the level that I need it to be set at. Right? So I've tabbed everything over so that it falls inside my for loop. <clears throat> All right, and um, we're going to define uh, a center point, a radius, and a sphere. Okay, so let's go back to using these variables, right? Um, and we're going to actually have to modify this object a little bit because this is a little too specific for my taste. I want to have a little bit more control. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that uh, my point is going to be located at a particular um, location, right? So we're going to say that the point is going to be based on the, um, the counter, right? So if I say, uh, let's say I'm going to use the point location, I'm going to use the counter for x and then 0, 0. Okay, so that's going to be a point that updates every time I move through my loop. So we start at 0, we move through. And then we finish that iteration. We go to i equals 1. So then it will be at 1, 0, 0, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and say my radius equals, and we're going to make this input uh, defined as uh, RAD, rad, or radius. All right. So the radius is going to be defined by the slider. And then we're going to create the sphere. My sphere equals rs.addSphere, my point, and my radius. And then at the end, uh, we have to say that we want to store the sphere on the list. So the next line is going to be store the current sphere on the list. Okay, um, and the way we're going to do that is that we're going to say that my awesome list dot is going to be appended with my sphere. So this will add the sphere, the current one, that I've created at this step within the loop. Um, it's going to add it to my awesome list, right? And then at the end, I'm going to return the list of spheres to the output. So at the end we'll say spheres equals my awesome list. Okay. All right, so for I in range 0 to 10 we're going to define a point based on the counter. We're going to define a radius based on the input, create a sphere, add it to the list, and at the end, and at the end, we're going to say my awesome list is going to go to the sphere's output. Now what that means is that we need to go back in here and make our modifications. Our output is going to be labeled as spheres. Our radius is going to be defined as radius. And we actually, at this point, are not going to be using this other input. So I'm going to zoom in and hit the negative. All right. And let's hit test, hit OK, everything looks all right. And now we have a bunch of spheres. All right, now if I change their size, I can see a little bit better what's happening, right? All right, so my radius will allow me to uh, modify how big they are, and their spacing is fixed, right? And if I look closely, I actually will have 11 spheres. So does anybody know why um, we have 11 spheres? If we look at our range 
method here, it says between 0 and 10, but it includes both, right? And if we're starting at uh, zero-based counting, that's actually going to give us 11. 